Greetings and salutations. Thank you for clicking on this video. Today we're going to say a big happy birthday to Linux. It is 25 years old. Yes, I know I'm a little late to the party. It was August the 25th and it is now after the 25th, but I usually always give people belated birthday wishes. I'm just terrible about remembering birthdays. And with Linux, it's no exception. 25 years ago, a fellow named Linus Torvalds decided that he wanted to have an operating system for his computer at home like the one that he was using at university in Helsinki, Finland. And they were using Minix systems, which were very expensive to license. And so he could not afford to actually buy one of these things, so he created his own. And then Linus did something really crazy. He decided that he wasn't going to sell this, keep it for himself, none of that stuff. No, he posted it on this new thing called the internet and then other people found it and they started playing with it and they contributed to it and it has grown that way for the last 25 years. The reason why Linus did that was because this fella, Richard Stallman, who started the Free Software Foundation in the mid 80s, had created something called the GNU public license, or the GNU general public license, actually. And it allows you to publish software with a copyleft type situation, which means that anybody can use that software for whatever they want to. It is freely available. The source code is available, so you can look at it, and then you can change it, you can add to it, you can modify it, whatever you want to do. The only trick is you have to, number one, give the original creator credit. Number two, you have to submit your patches to the original creator or make them public. And number three, if you are going to change the software significantly, you have to change its name. So that's why we end up with forks going on in Linux where they will take one piece of software and fork it and then it ends up having a different name because that's part of the GPL. So Richard Stallman and the folks at the Free Software Foundation have been working on an open source operating system called GNU. And GNU is a recursive acronym for GNU's not Unix because like Linus Torvalds, Richard Stallman wanted to have an open source type operating system that anybody could use any way they wanted to, modify any way they wanted to, and make it freely available because he had been bitten by Unix back in the past. The MIT lab where he worked had licensed a bunch of machines, and he found out he couldn't change the source code because of the licensing agreement, and that made him mad, so he quit and started the Free Software Foundation. By 1991, the GNU system was pretty much all there. They had all the tools necessary to do things with a computer except for one thing, and that was a kernel. The kernel that they were working on, which was called the herd, was an asynchronous kernel, which meant that it didn't do things in step order. It kind of acted independently, all of these little components in there. Well, that's really hard to debug, so it was taking them quite some time. Enter Linus Torvalds. Go back to Linus here. He created a kernel that was monolithic. It mirrored the way that Unix and Minix worked, and it fit right in with the GNU operating system. And it didn't take people long to figure out that if you took this kernel and you took all of the components of GNU, you would end up with this wonderful thing called Linux, and that's what we use today. So, you can go back and read the history if you like. You can go back and watch a great movie that's available on YouTube called Revolution OS. Uh, probably will actually only be interested in probably about the thir first 30 minutes of it, to tell you the truth. But... If you want a basic history and you want to hear these guys tell their own story, that is a great place to look. Before I wrap up this video, I want to address an issue that I have had people send me emails about, comments, things like that. And that is the name. This is Linux. Actually, the computer that you're looking at is running Linux Mint. And everybody calls this operating system Linux. However, it is a lot of it is, even to this day, GNU. So I'm going to open a terminal here, and I am going to issue an SSH command, and I'm going to log in to one of my machines. And if you look at the top line here, you see that this machine is Ubuntu 16.04 LTS, 
and then it identifies itself as GNU slash Linux and it tells you what kernel it's running. Unfortunately that's pretty much the only place that GNU gets that sort of recognition. And while I agree that the folks who work hard on GNU have kind of been slighted a little bit because it's not included in the name, I also think they're sort of fighting a losing battle because everybody knows this is Linux, that's the shorthand name of it, and so therefore, you know, I feel you, but I also think you're barking up the wrong tree, it's too late, it's Linux, but it's still really cool. So even though I don't think you'll see it, thank you Linus Torvalds for releasing that kernel and not keeping it to yourself. Thank you, Richard Stallman and all the folks in the free software movement for making the GNU system available to us. It certainly has enriched my life. I have really enjoyed my journey with Linux. I have talked many times about how I got into Linux and all that kind of stuff, so I'm not going to go through all that. This is just a quick happy birthday. And thank you to all the great Linux users out there, people in the community that have helped me along. I've learned so much by being involved with this. I think one of the reasons that open source works is because of the community reaction and involvement when you're working on this stuff. If you're a coder and you put a piece of software out there and people send you ideas and patches to your code, it just makes it, it keeps your attention on it. If you just create something and throw it out there and then it doesn't change and people don't react to it, you get bored with it and walk away but not in open source. Open source always has fresh ideas, new people coming along, taking a look at what you've done. Some people think you're an idiot. Some people think you're great. Some people add to it, and it just gets better and better. And it's one of the reasons that I really am very honored to be a part of the entire open source community. Thank you for watching. Be sure to check out Easy Linux on the web. Check out Easy Linux on Facebook. Check out FreedomPenguin.com for lots of great stories about GNU slash Linux. And keep it here for more videos as we roll along.